we have been talking about of design performance of aircraft engines and we have talked about various methods and various kinds of uh, engines on which of design performance can be uh, performed the calculations that need to be done and certain way that the of design performance can be uh, estimated today uh, I will try to give you uh, a demonstration of how of design performance uh, on an aircraft engine, a very simple turbojet engine can be carried out using some of the theories that we have done. And in the process of this demonstration uh, of the numerical example, I will try to also bring in one or two methods uh, which are kind of semi empirical methods which help. Uh, estimate the of design performances, because some of these methods are uh, semi empirical simply because uh, they need a lot more support system to carry out the of design uh, performance uh, estimation. And hence sometimes in absence of very elaborate support system, you may have to make use of some of the semi empirical methods. So, I will indicate where those things are brought into the estimation uh, procedure and I will also mention what are the uh, various uh, elaborate methods that uh, you should uh, or you may like to have to have more accurate of design estimation. The of design estimation can be performed to begin with when the aircraft is uh, engine is first uh, designed or first configured in terms of the cycle configuration, in terms of the first cut engine design. However, it needs to be done again later on when the engine design has been finally uh, made and sized and the geometries of various components are uh, ready made. And in those situations, one can do elaborate of design uh, estimation again. At that stage of time, one may have the component uh, performance uh, maps available, the intake map, the compressor map, the turbine map, those things would be available. Also, certain amount of integration between the intake and the compressor might have already been done. Again, integration between the turbine and the nozzle may have been done. The overall engine may have already been integrated into one unit. So, many of those things are done at the end of the engine design. At that point of time, if you are doing off design analysis, you would get a lot of support in terms of the compressor map, the turbine map, so on and so forth. However, if you are doing an off design analysis a priori, when the engine is first being designed or the first cut uh, design or cycle design or a first cut design is just available to you, you would probably be looking for a more uh, quick analysis of the off design possibility and as to where the engine may be fulfilling its need and where it may be falling short of the uh, needs of certain requirements. So, at that stage of time, you may have to uh, employ certain uh, semi empirical uh, relations, which are often a very quick method to uh, find out whether the off design performance of the engine is indeed uh, uh, suitable for requirement of particular aircraft application. So, in today's demonstration, we will take up a simple turbojet engine uh, and demonstrate step by step how of design performances are made. In the process, uh, we will also uh, look at what its design performance indeed was or what it was designed for and the design values of various performance parameters, the figures of merit would also be shown alongside. So, that uh, one has a good uh, idea about what the of design performance uh, uh, actual numerical values are with reference to the uh, design performance values. So, those comparisons would be made alongside uh, and some of the design parameters would be set forth right in the beginning. So, that you get a good notion of what is happening with reference to an of design performance uh, with reference to the uh, design performance. So, in today's lecture, we will take up a simple turbojet engine in which uh, the of design performance uh, would be uh, demonstrated through a numerical example. Uh, so, that 
that step by step performance estimation can be uh, understood and followed by you. So, let us take up a simple example uh, which is uh, useful for off design performance estimation. If we look at uh, uh, design data of a typical turbojet engine, it is marked here, it has been designed for a 12 kilometer uh, altitude at Mach 2. So, it is flying at supersonic speed, where the ambient temperature is 216.7 K and uh, ambient pressure is 19.4 kilopascals. Now, at that design uh, point, it is uh, configured that the compression uh, compressor pressure ratio or compression ratio would be 10. The engine maximum temperature, which is the turbine inlet temperature would be 1800 K. The heating value of the fuel uh, normally given as Q would be 42,800 kilojoules per uh, kg and intake design pressure uh, recovery factor uh, which we are putting as uh, pi i loss uh, would be equal to 0.95. The combustion chamber pressure recovery or pressure loss uh, factor uh, pi c c would be 0 0.94 and the nozzle pressure recovery factor uh, that is pi n loss would be uh, 0.96. Nozzle exit phase pressure ratio that means, at the exit of the nozzle P a by uh, uh, P x E x would be uh, 0.5 and uh, the polytropic efficiency of the compressor uh, stages uh, for each of these stages is 0 0.9. Polytropic efficiency of the turbine stages is given as also 0.9. The combustion efficiency uh, is given as 0 0.98 and the mechanical efficiency of the shaft uh, eta mechanical is 0 0.99. Now, as you can see here, the design is being uh, done for the turbojet engine uh, at supersonic flight condition at 12 kilometer altitude, where the aircraft is uh, flying uh, supersonic at Mach 2. And at that condition, uh, the design is being uh, configured. So, all the values that are prescribed here are essentially uh, valid for the design uh, condition and we shall be using uh, some of these essentially for uh, our off design configuration. So, let us see where all the off design values would differ from the design values and where all we may uh, continue to use some of the design values to uh, estimate off design uh, performance. Now, this design point data that has been uh, given uh, yields a certain uh, design point uh, performance uh, estimation, which we can put down here and we may uh, use this for comparison uh, purposes as we go along with our off design performance. For example, the compression temperature ratio uh, can now be written down in terms of uh, uh, the polytropic efficiency that has been uh, given and the pressure ratio that has been given and given that pressure ratio and a polytropic efficiency and given the value of gamma air uh, that is 1.4 a normal value of gamma, we get a temperature ratio across the compressor as 2.0771 and the corresponding uh, isentropic efficiency of the compressor given the polytropic efficiency which is 0.9 and considered to be equal for all the stages, the overall isentropic efficiency of the entire 10 uh, pressure ratio compressor would be 0.8641, which is 86.41 percent. The turbine temperature ratio across the turbine, uh, you have a, temp a pressure drop normally. So, there would be a temperature drop and hence uh, again using the polytropic efficiency of the turbine that has been prescribed in the design we get a turbine temperature ratio of 0 0.8155 and the corresponding turbine isentropic efficiency is 0 0.901, which is 90.1 percent. So, those are the values we get for the compressor and the turbine. The turbine pressure ratio then comes out to be 0 0.375 uh, across the turbine that drives the compressor. If we use all these values and if you follow the uh, overall cycle analysis that we have done in the cycle analysis chapter in this lecture series, uh, 
and if you follow that procedure, you would probably get a specific thrust of the order of 806.9 newtons per kilogram per second. The mass flow through the engine uh, is 50 kgs per second. The thrust uh, would correspondingly then be 40.35 kilo newtons. The corresponding SFC would be 44.21 milligrams per newtons per second, uh, which can also be expressed in terms of kilograms per newton hour. The corresponding fuel air uh, ratio f by a or f would be uh, 0.03567 and that is a fuel air ratio that we would be uh, looking at. Uh, thermal efficiency of this engine at the design point would be 41.9 percent. The propulsive efficiency uh, eta p would be 74.4 percent and the corresponding overall efficiency of the engine would be 31.2 percent. Now, these are the design values we get out of the design point that has been prescribed to us following the design uh, point cycle calculation, uh, the, the methodology that you have done in some great detail in your cycle analysis chapter and if you follow that methodology, you would get these values out of the design point that has been prescribed to us. Now, we can see what all prescription is given for off design uh, point and then we will proceed on to do the off design uh, performance estimation. So, let us look at the off design performance prescription. The prescription that is given is that off design uh, engine uh, is performance need to be estimated at an altitude of 9 kilometers at which the aircraft engine is now flying at a Mach number of 1.5, where the temperature is 229.8 k and the pressure is uh, atmospheric pressure is 30.8 kilo Pascals. Prescribed is that the turbine entry temperature would be 1670 k and the exit phase pressure ratio at the exit of the nozzle the engine nozzle would be P A by P 5 would be 0.955. That means, uh, it will come pretty close to being equal to the ambient pressure. So, the exit pressure could be pretty close to being equal to the ambient pressure. So, those are the prescriptions aircraft flying at 9 kilometer altitude at a mark of 1.5 uh, and turbine entry temperature uh, 1670 k as prescribed for of design calculations. Now, let us see how we can proceed to do of design performance estimation. As I have mentioned before, we will probably be uh, showing uh, all the design point calculations that has been done uh, priori and we will try to show them alongside here. So, that you get a notion of uh, the difference between the design point and the of design uh, performance that uh, we are calculating now. To begin with, we can uh, calculate the gas constants at the operating condition, uh, which is uh, we can do it both for air ambient air as well as for the gas the combusted gas mixture of air and uh, burnt uh, fuel and the combination gives us uh, the uh, gas constant uh, R value for the air we can calculate it and it comes out to be 0 0.2869 kilojoules per kilogram per uh, Kelvin. The corresponding value for the gas that is the combination mixture of uh, air and burnt fuel um, the value of R comes out to be 0 0.2859 kilojoules per kilogram uh, Kelvin. Now, if you remember uh, normally for uh, ambient condition at sea level, the universal value that normally used for air is 0.287. So, as we can see here, if the operating condition of the engine is different, uh, you would probably need to calculate the values of R uh, afresh to uh, get more accurate estimation of your engine performance. Now, of design performance has been pegged at uh, uh, 9 kilometer altitude at which we can now find out what the sonic speed would be and using the uh, 
normal uh, isentropic relation uh, that is root over gamma r t for the sonic speed. We get a sonic speed of 303.8 meters per second um, at 9 kilometer altitude and as you can see that sonic speed is higher than the design value which at 12 kilometer was 295 meters per second. Correspondingly at 9 kilometer the flight velocity is now uh, with reference to Mach 1.5 would be 455.7 meters per second. Now, contrast this to the design uh, flight velocity which was 590 meters per second at Mach 2. So, it is flying at a lower altitude, but it also flying at a lower Mach number and as a result the flight velocity is now less by a substantial amount from the design flight velocity. Correspondingly, the inlet temperature pressure rise which is conversion of the kinetic energy to uh, pressure uh, that is uh, ram pressurization as we may call it uh, as we have called it in this uh, lecture series. Now, this inlet temperature rise comes out to be uh, uh, 1.45 using the normal isentropic relation of conversion of kinetic head to uh, static head. Corresponding uh, the design value was 1.8. So, at 12 kilometer at design point the temperature rise was uh, compared to the uh, ambient pressure uh, temperature it was much more. The corresponding inlet pressurization or pressure rise uh, using again the isentropic relation uh, from the temperature uh, ratio that we have just found and we can find pi i and the temperature ratio uh, to the power gamma by gamma minus 1 gives us essentially the pressure rise or the pressure ratio across the inlet which essentially is the ram pressurization and this ram pressurization is now 3.671 for the off design uh, operating condition which at design point was much higher at 7.825. So, as we can see now there is a big difference between the design point and the off design uh, ram pressurization or the ram effect uh, that is happening uh, across the uh, intake of the engine. So, with these values we can move forward to calculate some of the other values the of the engine. From this uh, calculation, so we can say that the intake delivery total temperature would be 333 uh, k which is again far less than the design point value which was 390 k. So, the flow was going into the compressor earlier at a somewhat higher temperature. Uh, the off design analysis of the intake uh, uses a certain empirical formula here or semi empirical formula I would say to uh, calculate the intake efficiency. Now, it stands to aerodynamic sense that the intake which is once it has been designed you would probably need to analyze it for under various off design operating conditions. Now, these off design operating conditions operating at different ambient condition different uh, mark number entry mark number would promote completely different kind of aerodynamics inside the intake and in this case we are looking at a supersonic intake which means the shock structure in front of the intake would be quite different from the uh, design uh, shock structure and as a result the flow through the intake would be quite different from the design uh, shock flows and hence the intake uh, aerodynamics would be quite different. Now, that requires a more elaborate aerodynamic analysis uh, may be using CFD and that elaborate analysis is possible only when the intake is completely designed in an integrated manner with the whole engine and only when the intake is designed you have a complete picture of what may be happening and you can do a full uh, CFD analysis of the intake or maybe a test rig uh, uh, analysis of the intake geometry uh, in full. At that point of time you would have a more accurate idea of what ha what is happening inside the intake under various of design operating condition. Now, till that is done you do not know extremely accurately very accurately what are the in intake performance schedules 
under various of design operating conditions. So, till that is available made available to you, you may use certain semi empirical uh, relationships to move along in your of design uh, performance estimation. So, in this analysis we are doing that because the full intake uh, performance uh, accurate performance schedule is not available to us uh, and we have to move along and get a first cut reasonable performance estimation under of design condition. So, if we look at uh, the empirical formula that may be used uh, it says that the intake efficiency eta i can be 1 minus uh, 0 0.075 uh, into m a minus 1 to the power uh, 1.35. Now, this uh, essentially uh, tells us that uh, it gives us first cut notion of what the intake efficiency could be and that comes out to be 0 0.9706. Contrast this to the design point intake efficiency which is indeed 0.925 and as a result of it we can say that the intake efficiency at off design condition is indeed actually higher than the design point intake efficiency which should not be a big surprise in view of the fact that now it is operating at mark 1.5 which is a lower mark number and the shock losses would be far lower than the design point which was at mark 2. So, this higher intake efficiency should be uh, quite uh, acceptable in view of the fact that the shock losses would be higher. The corresponding intake pressure recovery factor which means how much of the ideal uh, total pressure is recovered by this intake can now be found out and that would be uh, intake efficiency eta i into the uh, pi design which was uh, given earlier and this uh, tells us that the value could be 0.922 which is again higher than the design value which was 0 0.8788. So, the pressure recovery also at Mach 1.5 is better than that at Mach 2 which is again uh, what is expected uh, in view of the fact that it is flying at a lower Mach number. Now, we uh, figure out what the maximum to minimum enthalpy ratio <coughs> in the engine uh, could be you are probably familiar with the engine cycle temperature ratio which is normally given in terms of the maximum temperature to uh, the minimum temperature with which the flow is going going in and this uh, temperature ratio can here also be converted to uh, enthalpy ratio by also using the values of cp of gas and cp of air and if we do that we get a uh, uh, maximum to minimum enthalpy ratio of this engine uh, in terms of uh, their uh, prescribed parameters as 8.97. Now, as you can see here, this is less than the design value which was given as 10.25. Now, which means it is operating firstly with a lower turbine entry temperature and as a result of which the enthalpy ratio available now would be somewhat lower than the design enthalpy ratio. If we move forward and try to find out what the compression ratio would be at this off design condition, uh, we need to make use of whatever is available at hand. Now, ideally if the compressor has been fully designed, you may like to have the compressor may map made available to you and then you can find out what the compression ratio would be under the off design condition. We have discussed the compressor map in quite a great detail in the earlier lectures and if you look at them you will find somewhere we had clearly shown there was a design point and all the other operating conditions of the compressor are of design point. So, we have to find this design of design operating condition on that compressor map and then figure out what the compression ratio would be at that particular operating condition and use that to uh, do our of design estimation. However, what happens is <clears throat> when the engine is first being designed, the compressor may not be fully designed as yet and if the compressor is not fully designed, it simply means that the compressor map is not yet available to you and if the compressor map is not available, you would probably need to find out some uh, good first cut method of 
finding out what the off design performance schedule would be at the given off design operating condition. So, we shall use that methodology uh, assuming that the compressor is not yet fully designed and hence the compressor map is not yet available to us. So, let us look at what uh, methodology one can uh, uh, use to estimate the uh, off design uh, compression ratio of the uh, compressor. What we can do is uh, we can find out what the off design performance uh, would be. Uh, firstly, we find out what the temperature ratio under off design condition and this temperature ratio can be related to the design temperature ratio which was uh, prescribed earlier and as, as a result of it we get uh, if we use this simple thermodynamic uh, relationship simply finding out what the design to off design uh, ratios are of the maximum to minimum uh, temperature and then uh, factoring that as a possible off design temperature ratio across the compressor what we get is a compression ratio of the order of 2.17. Now, contrast that to the off design condition uh, design point temperature ratio which was 2.077 and we can see that the temperature ratio at off design condition is indeed more than the design point temperature ratio. Uh, this means that the compression ratio the pressure ratio across the uh, compressor would indeed also be more than the design point pressure ratio which was prescribed as 10 and we see here that the off design point we have a pressure ratio which is 11.53 using the simple thermodynamic relations that uh, we have done before uh, probably more than once. Now, this means that in terms of the compression ratio we are now getting more compression at off design condition compared to the design point compression ratio that was prescribed for the engine. Now, this is something which is not totally unexpected because what happens is if you if you remember the compressor map your map uh, it has a design point, but the compressor map compression ratio is not maximum at the design point. There is a certain compressor map in which the compression ratio is indeed higher than the design point and of course, it moves towards the stall. So, this particular operating point is now somewhere between the design point and the stall point and as a result of which it is actually working at a higher compression ratio than the design point and hence uh, some of its performances would be uh, accordingly altered from the design point quite substantially. So, we can we we have got a de off design operating point now at which the compression ratio is indeed higher than the design point. To some extent, uh, it, it also has some meaning that we saw that the inlet temperature to the compressor from the intake is indeed actually lower than the design point. Design point because of the very high uh, Mach number, the in inlet temperature was a little on the higher side uh, and of course, the compression ratio was lower. Here, the inlet temperature is on the lower side and we are in the process getting a higher compression ratio across the compressor. So, we have a off design point where pressure ratio is higher than the design point pressure ratio. Now, let us look at what happens to the other parameters. The fuel air ratio can also be found from the heat release in the combustion chamber. We know what the heat release would be across the combustion chamber and if we do that, we find that and we use the uh, enthalpy uh, ratio that we have found. We can find the intake uh, temperature ratio, we can use the uh, compressor uh, temperature ratio and then we use the heating value of the fuel that has been given to us, the efficiency of the combustion chamber and uh, factor that with the inlet uh, condition. Uh, if we put it all together in this simple formula. Uh, which essentially uses the uh, heat release that has been affected uh, through the heat release process in the combustion chamber in thermodynamic uh, manner, we get uh, a fuel air ratio which is uh, 0 0.0337. Now, we can see here that the fuel air ratio is now less than the fuel air ratio of the design point which was 0 0.0357. 
So, the fuel air ratio now at off design point is indeed lower than the design point uh, fuel air ratio. To some extent, this corresponds to the fact that it is operating at a higher compression ratio. So, typically a cycle which operates at a higher compression ratio can do with a lower fuel air ratio. So, the two values we see here uh, to some extent corresponds to each other from thermodynamic cycle uh, point of view that we have done before. If we now continue, we can find out what the pressure ratio across the exit nozzle uh, uh, may be uh, from all the pressure ratios that we have uh, put together. We have the intake pressure ratio, we have the intake pressure recovery factor which we have called pi i loss. Then we have the pressure ratio across the compressor we have the pressure ratio across the combustion chamber which is nothing but pressure loss across the combustion chamber. We also got the temperature ra uh, pressure ratio across the turbine and uh, the nozzle pressure recovery factor. Now, uh, the last two that is the turbine pressure ratio and the nozzle pressure recovery factor, we assume these to remain uh, same as the design point because we are assuming that the turbine and the combustion chamber has same effective performance and that the nozzle is still choked. In fact, we can we probably would also be assuming that the turbine is also working under still under choked flow condition. So, once we assume that the turbine uh, some of the turbine related uh, parameters can be uh, again used for off design uh, performance estimation and it allows us to move forward and which is a fair assumption really under various off design operating condition. Many of the turbine and uh, combustion chamber and nozzle related parameters do actually hold uh, constant whereas, some of the intake and compressor related performance parameters change quite significantly. If we now put together all the parameters that we have uh, put here and we, we uh, put their uh, numerical numbers. Uh, holding on to the design values uh, related to the turbine uh, and nozzle, we see that and the combustion chamber, we see that the pressure ratio across the nozzle is now 12.6 and contrast this to the pressure ratio available at design point which is 11.62 and then uh, it also tells us that the nozzle pressure ratio is still very high uh, for it to remain choked. Uh, we have discussed this in your uh, intake nozzle uh, chapter and we have shown that if the nozzle pressure ratio is very high, you have to use a convergent divergent nozzle and this convergent divergent nozzle is what has been indeed used in this particular engine uh, for uh, the design uh, uh, pressure ratio which was 11.62 which means this con convergent divergent nozzle would continue to be useful at the off design operating condition that we are looking at because the pressure ratio is still very high. Now, if you look at the jet exhaust Mach number which promotes the thrust uh, making, this can be calculated from the thermodynamic relations that uh, we have done in, in detail. Uh, through the course of this uh, lecture series and we use uh, the performance uh, the pressure ratio that is uh, we, we have just found across the nozzle and if we use that we find that the Mach number at the exit phase of the engine is 2.3 which is marginally more than 2.25 which was the design exit Mach number of the jet. Now, uh, we still see that it is creating a supersonic jet at the exit and at the off design operating point it is marginally more than the design point exit jet mark number. What we can do now is we can find the off design engine temperature ratio and the turbine uh, temperature ratio. Now, we are saying that <coughs> the turbine temperature ratio holds which is same as the design because it is still under working under choking condition and hence its uh, uh, temperature ratio and pressure ratio would hold. And if we do that and we use those values, the temperature ratio uh, uh, 
of the engine across uh, the engine exhaust phase uh, with reference to the ambient condition that is T 5 by T A can be related to again to the enthalpy uh, ratio, which if you remember was essentially uh, more related to the turbine engine temperature ratio and then of course, the turbine temperature ratio and we use the uh, pressure ratio across the nozzle and then of course, the values of C p of air and C p of gas assuming they are two different values and we have uh, uh, those values available with us and if we use those values, we get a uh, temperature ratio across the turbine phase exit exhaust phase um, nozzle exhaust phase uh, as 3.3 which if you contrast to the design value which was 3.85. So, the turbine uh, the nozzle exhaust uh, temperature now uh, is less than the uh, nozzle exhaust temperature which was happening under design operating condition. So, uh, which essentially means that uh, it is going out with a lower temperature uh, under of design operating condition. If we now try to find out what is happening at the exhaust uh, condition, uh, first we find out what the sonic speed is based on the exhaust temperature that we have already found and the sonic speed if we put together root over gamma r t at sonic uh, at the exhaust phase using the values of gamma gas and r of the gas and if we put those values we get a uh, sonic speed of 531 meters per second at the exhaust condition of the jet engine. Correspondingly, from the Mach number that we have got of the jet exhaust, we get uh, uh, exhaust velocity V 5 or V exhaust as 1221 meters per second. So, this is the jet velocity with which the flow is being ejected from the uh, main engine and this is the jet which is effectively uh, helping us create the thrust. The with which the aircraft uh, would be uh, flying. Corresponding to this calculations, uh, we can uh, now say that the specific thrust may be calculated now using the uh, normal relationship of specific thrust, which is 1 plus f, which is the failure ratio into the V 5 minus V a. V a of course, is the flight velocity and the pressure thrust P 5 minus P, P a as we now know certain amount of uh, residual pressure exists at the ex exhaust phase and that would give us a little bit of pressure thrust. Now, this uh, the first part that is the momentum uh, thrust uh, comes out to be 806.5. However, the pressure thrust uh, calculation uh, requires uh, the values of mass flow and also uh, the density which of course, we can calculate from P 5 and T 5 which we have already uh, completed and V 5 which was available with us. So, rho 5 can uh, the density can indeed be very quickly calculated, but we need to quickly find the mass flow which is passing through the engine. Now, calculation of the mass flow requires again a little more uh, discussion. If we look at the mass flow that needs to be calculated again if we had the compressor map or if we had the turbine map or we had the maps of intake, compressor, turbine, nozzle all of them available with us. We can have a coordinated uh, uh, configuration of the engine from which we can get this of design mass flow. The easiest way or the more uh, adopted method is the one where you use the compressor mass flow, you have the compression ratio available with you and from which from the compressor map, you can find out what the mass flow would be, which is normally the uh, x axis. That mass flow can be used for the engine calculations. However, as I have stated before, the compressor map is not really available with us at this stage of our estimation. The turbine map is not available with us and as a result of which, we have to use certain simple method using the basic thermodynamics that we are doing to calculate what the of design mass flow could possibly be. So, without the aid of the turbine or the compressor map, <coughs> which nowadays of course, would be available in digital form or digitized maps. In absence of those maps, 
we have to adopt a very simple straight cut method of finding out what the off design mass flow could possibly be. So let's look at what the off design mass flow could be through a very simple straightforward method. The mass flow uh, at off design can be related to the design mass flow now by using first the design mass flow and then if we use the parameters that we have of the engine, the ambient condition, the intake uh, pressure ratio, the intake pressure recovery, the compression ratio, the product of all of them uh, compared to the product of all of them at the design point and then a uh, root over of T 0 uh, 3 which is the turbine entry temperature at the design point and the same thing at the off design point. So, if we just compare all the values uh, the important engine parameters at the design point and then at the off design point and take a simple ratio of them we can arrive at a first cut uh, mass flow estimation which gives us the mass flow to be 46.8 kilograms per second. Now, as you can see here the mass flow now is less than the design mass flow which was given for given as 50 kilograms per second. So, our off design mass flow is now less than the design mass flow. If we use this mass flow now, we get a certain estimation of the specific thrust which then comes out to be using this mass flow, we can go back to the specific thrust that we were estimating and we can come back to the second uh, term which is the calculation of the pressure thrust where we can now plug in the mass flow and uh, also we can plug in the value of density of uh, the gas at the exhaust phase. And if we plug in those values um, and we get the second term also calculated which is the pressure thrust, we get a complete specific thrust of 816 newtons per kilogram per second which as you see now is slightly higher than the design uh, <coughs> specific thrust of 806.9 uh, kilograms per second. So, your off design specific thrust uh, is coming out to be a little more than the design specific thrust uh, because of the various uh, operating conditions that has been prescribed and uh, the fact that the compression ratio is higher uh, than the design point, it is operating at a higher compression ratio and we end up getting a specific thrust that is uh, marginally higher than the design specific thrust. It is one of the reasons is that at this condition we have a certain amount of uh, pressure thrust that is also contributing to the specific thrust. Hence, now if you multiply this with the mass flow that we have just calculated at this off design condition, the thrust of the uh, engine comes out to be 38.2 kilo newtons which is now less than the design thrust which was 40.35 kilo newtons. So, now you can see here that even if the specific thrust is higher than the design value, the actual value of the thrust would be lower because the mass flow was quite a lot lower than almost uh, 3 to 4 um, 5 to 8 percent lower than the design value and as a result of which the actual value of the thrust is also lower at 38.2 kilo newtons. We can now estimate the thermal efficiency which is normally done uh, using the uh, energy that is imparted to the gas in terms of uh, normally estimated in terms of the kinetic energy. Now, the kinetic energy of the gas or the specific kinetic energy of the gas is 1 plus f into V 5 square and minus V a square that is the kinetic energy with which the air had gone inside the en engine, it entered the engine with that kinetic energy and it is coming out with this kinetic energy and the difference between the two is of course, the energy that has been imparted to the air in the process of operation through the engine, its travel through the engine. Now, that uh, compare that to the amount of energy that has been burnt uh, in the fuel. So, the burnt fuel energy uh, that is Q into F gives us the energy that has been burnt uh, uh, available through the burnt uh, gas uh, of the fuel uh, air mixture and that uh, again uh, per unit mass flow. So, both numerator and denominator are per unit mass flow. 
uh, in the sense the mass flow cancel them out and as a result of which we get a thermal efficiency of 46.2 percent. Now, again mark here that this thermal efficiency is indeed a little more than the thermal efficiency of the engine at design point. Now, this higher thermal efficiency that we have found also stands to reason uh, by the fact that at off design it is operating at higher pressure ratio. This higher pressure ratio indeed uh, yields the higher thermal efficiency and <clears throat> we had seen that it also gives higher specific thrust. So, we have a off design operating condition now where certain parameters are indeed higher than the design uh, point parameter uh, in terms of compression ratio, in terms of specific thrust. However, the mass flow is lower, the thrust produced is lower. Indeed, it is supposed to be flying at a lower Mach number. Next, we can find the propulsive efficiency which again we use the definition that we have introduced earlier in this lecture series and that is the actual thrust work that is done by the engine F into V A that uh, compared to the energy that is available with the uh, gas which is the exhaust energy minus the entry energy uh, which we used in the earlier definition in the numerator that now comes in the denominator multiplied by the mass flow is the energy that is available to this mass of uh, air that is passing through the engine, but the engine thrust that is being created is f and with the velocity with which it is flying that tells us what the thrust work that is being done. So, when we compare the thrust work to the energy available to the gas, we find that only 55.5 percent of the energy that is available to the gas is indeed being used for thrust creation and rest of it is probably likely to be wasted in uh, exhaust energy. Now, contrast that to the design point propulsive efficiency which as you can see now here was much higher. So, the propulsive efficiency of the engine at the design point uh, is expected to be at the best and it is indeed higher than the off design point at which we are now trying to find out what the uh, propulsive efficiency is. Now, this tells us that even if you have a thermal efficiency that is higher than the uh, design point, you can have a propulsive efficiency that is lower. In fact, it is substantially lower than the design point. Now, these two efficiencies together essentially yield the overall efficiency actually the overall efficiency uh, could essentially be the multiplication of the earlier two efficiencies. However, we can use the original efficiency definition which is the thrust uh, divided by the energy that has been put in by the uh, burning of the fuel and the, this yields us uh, overall efficiency of 25.8 percent which as you can see here is lower than the overall efficiency of the uh, engine at the design point which tells us that the engine is now working at a lower efficiency than compared to the design point. The design point efficiency as expected uh, is supposed to be one of the highest efficiency operating points of the engine and this particular of off design operating point the overall efficiency is indeed lower than the design point operating efficiency. Uh, this contrasts to the fact that even if it is operating at a <coughs> better compression ratio, even if it is producing higher specific thrust and maybe one or two other parameters which are better than the design point, its overall efficiency is still less than the design point. Correspondingly, the fuel air uh, consumption that we get is uh, calculated using the uh, fuel, uh, fuel air ratio that we have got. Uh, the SFC is nothing but the fuel air ratio divided by specific thrust and if you do that you get a value of 41.3 uh, milligrams per Newton second. Uh, this can also be of course expressed in terms of kilograms per Newton hour and contrast that to the design point value where we get 44.21 which means that the specific fuel consumption at this operating point is actually slightly less than the specific fuel consumption of the design point which was a flight Mach number at uh, altitude of uh, 12 kilometers at Mach 2. So, we have calculated the engine parameters 
at an off design uh, operating point which is defined at altitude of uh, 9 kilometers and at Mach 1.5 and compared all the parameters with the design point parameters. So, we have estimated uh, the off design esti uh, performance of the entire engine and it tells us that overall efficiency is lower than the design point efficiency, the thrust is lower than the design point thrust um, and, but some of its other figures of merit the specific thrust is good, it is actually marginally higher than the design point and the specific fuel consumption is indeed actually lower than the design point specific fuel consumption. So, this off design point is a good off design point uh, where the aircraft can operate very successfully without um, uh, using a lot of fuel of the engine and the engine has a good operating efficiency, good operating performance at this off design operating condition. So, this is what our off design estimation uh, at the prescribed off design point tells us in comparison to the design point uh, estimation that we have done before and that had been prescribed to us earlier. We have done this without the aid of the compressor map or the turbine map, without the aid of detailed uh, intake estimation uh, with the help of um, CFD or rig test and without the detailed uh, nozzle estimation again uh, with the help of CFD or rig test. So, without the help of any of those things, we have used simple thermodynamic based uh, relations and I have introduced some of the semi empirical relations to uh, move along in the off design calculation and that gives us a reasonable off design estimation of uh, this particular engine which has been prescribed to us and we see that it is a good off design operating condition. What I will do is I will just give the same engine to you under uh, various uh, uh, different off design condition. In the given off design condition, you can also find the specific speed of the uh, turbine compressor and that comes out to be 0.928. We related that to the temperature, operating temperature with reference to the design and the pressure ratio of the compressor with reference to the design pressure ratio and it tells us that the off design engine speed can be 92.8 percent of the design operating speed. Similarly, the exit nozzle area may be related to the design nozzle area and again using the simple ratio with reference to the design values of the mass flow of the exit flow conditions and we see that the off design area of the nozzle at the exit should be 5 percent more than the design point nozzle area at the exit uh, at the exhaust phase. So, these two things can also be found very quickly by very simple of design uh, estimation uh, using the simple thermodynamics. We will now leave you with an exercise problem which is configured at an off design condition under uh, altitude of 6 kilometers and it is flying at a Mach number of 1.1. At that altitude the prescribed temperature is 249.2 Kelvin and the pressure is 47.18 kilo Pascals. The turbine entry temperature has been prescribed as 1450 uh, K and the engine uh, exit phase pressure ratio is again prescribed as 0.85. You can try to do the off design calculation on your own using the same procedure that uh, we have just enumerated uh, through this off design calculation and see what kind of answers you get and whether you get a good off design operating condition, we got a good off design condition. Just see whether you are also getting a good off design condition. So, that brings us to the end of this off design numerical e example. I hope you would be able to uh, look at the off design procedure and make use of it yourself and see whether you yourself get a good off design condition or whether you get off design condition which is indeed probably not so good. I leave that to you to do it by yourself.